Alice the Musical is a stage musical adaptation of two very famous books by Lewis Carroll, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass. I was asked to write it in 1998. It was a commission from the Lyric Theatre in Belfast. I'm from Belfast, I grew up in Northern Ireland. And we, we've never had a national theatre. There's a National Theatre of Scotland, a National Theatre of Wales, and of course the National Theatre here in England. Uh, so for over 50 years, the Lyric has been the only full-time professional producing theatre in Northern Ireland. So that has been our national theatre. We used to go there as kids. When I was a pupil at school, we would be taken to the Lyric Theatre. Studying drama at university, we went to the Lyric Theatre. So you can imagine my excitement as a young writer in my early 20s, being asked to write a musical for the Lyric Theatre Belfast. I'd written some musicals before that, uh, which had been produced either on tour around Ireland or in the regional theatres in Northern Ireland. Um, and actually, in the years leading up to Alice, uh, I'd been making a name for myself writing uh, family musicals uh, which by definition have to appeal to everyone from the smallest kid to the oldest adult uh, which were based on either works of children's literature or fairy tales and the regional theatres would stage these over Christmas time um, and I'd written uh, The Elves and the Shoemaker, I did a musical of Rumpelstiltskin and in 1997 I did a musical of Hansel and Gretel and the Lyric Theatre saw that uh, production of Hansel and Gretel. They wanted a musical like Hansel and Gretel, but based on the book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. If I'm honest, no, I wasn't, I wasn't overly keen on the subject matter. Um, as much as I wanted to write my first show for the Lyric Theatre, I was a bit concerned about uh, Alice. Uh, primarily because a few years before I'd written songs for a production which was an adaptation of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It was a, a, a show that toured to schools. Um, I think it was a dance show more than anything because I don't remember there being a script. But anyway, in, in getting these songs ready I, um, I had gone back and read the original book. And uh, two things really struck me. The first was that if you're doing an adaptation, be it for stage or television or film or whatever, of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, you really need to include characters from the second book, Through the Looking Glass, uh, because there are some characters in the second book, Tweedledum and Tweedledee, the Red Queen, the White Knight, that audiences will expect to see in an adaptation. The second thing I noticed was that because of how the stories were originally written, uh, so these were stories told by Lewis Carroll to a group of kids that he liked, that he saw every now and again, which he later went and wrote down, but they were episodic in nature, which meant that there really is no story. I mean, really, Alice falls down a rabbit hole, meets uh, meets some very interesting people uh, in every chapter and then wakes up again. So when you're doing an adaptation of that for the stage uh, you really have to think about imposing some kind of storyline on that uh, in order for it to sustain a two-hour show. So those were my concerns. Um, the Lyric and I spoke about them and they were very happy for me to adapt both books into one show and they were very happy for me to write a plot for the show and and I guess that's kind of how it how it came about. The first production opened under the title Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in November 1998 and uh, it was a big success. It was a big surprise and a big success. I think part of that was due to the fact that nobody else had done a show like that in Belfast. A big family musical over Christmas that appealed to everyone from school kids, uh, obviously, right the way through to office parties, Christmas do's, um, you know, a, a social group outings, um, you know, Boy Scouts, Girl Guides, um, everyone, dra drama students, everyone came to see the show and um, and we produced a CD of the show, um, The we were nominated for awards, we got fantastic reviews. So it, it really made a big impact and that was partly uh, because I think the creative team were all very new 
None of us had worked at the Lyric Theatre before. We were all in our early 20s. We'd all worked together before on musicals I'd written, but none of us had been at the Lyric. What's interesting to note now is that many of the creative team, of course, have gone on to have fantastic careers in, in theatre. The original set and costume designs were by Gary McCann, a young Northern Irish set and costume designer. Well, now he's known nationally. He produces uh, work for theatres up and down the country. He's got shows in the West End. Uh, and he's known internationally. He designs opera all over the world. The show was choreographed by a young dancer called Rachel O'Reardon. Uh, Rachel, of course, then went on to become a director herself, got a PhD. Uh, she now runs the Lyric Theatre in Hammersmith. The show was directed by Carl Wallace. Uh, he ended up running the National Folk Theatre of Ireland and is currently head of festivals and events for the Irish Arts Council. So it, in retrospect, the Lyric took a big chance on handing over the keys to the theatre to this kind of unproven bunch of 20-somethings, uh, but it really, did, it, it really did mean that we created something nobody else did, and it's something that uh, the Lyric has continued to try to replicate since then. And of course, other, other venues now um, try to produce what we did and, and what we continue to do at the Lyric. That particular production actually went on to be produced in various theatres around Ireland for the next four years. And I don't just mean the show, I mean the actual production, the same set and costume designs, same basic direction, same basic choreography with different casts. Um, so that really did cement Alice's Adventures in Wonderland in, in people's memory. Uh, there was always a production of it being done somewhere uh, over Christmas, and I think we even at one point there was a summer run of it um, at a theatre. Um, and then in 2004, I got the opportunity to direct the show, and I wanted to make some changes. By this point, I had my own recording studio, so I was able to fully reorchestrate the show. Um, I probably give the script and the lyrics a bit of a brush up to that version of the show, uh, which was now called Alice the Musical, uh, which I think better reflects the show. Uh, that is the version of the show that since then has been produced all over the world. Um, obviously there's been productions up and down the UK. Uh, there have been three major productions in the United States. Uh, in 2011, it was translated into Japanese for a production at the Nagoya Opera House in Japan. And of course, there have been hundreds of uh, amateur and non-professional and student productions of the show all over the world. It's very, very popular in Australia. There's a German translation of it as well. So for 20 years, Alice has been produced all over the world, uh, but it has never uh, been back to the Lyric Theatre and it has never been back in Belfast until now. Well, the Lyric and I have been talking for some years about getting the production back. I happened to be at the Lyric last year directing another show and we started talking again and it turned out that we could do it this year, 2018, which is the Lyric Theatre's 50th anniversary and also, of course, Alice the Musical's 20th anniversary. Well, I spent most of uh, this year uh, working on a new version of the show uh, for the 20th anniversary. I've completely reorchestrated all of the music um, so that Alice the Musical now has a much more universal and musical theatre sound. And um, I've added three new songs to the show, which have gone in in places that I always felt uh, the musical should have had a number and it never did. I have uh, brushed up the script and put some new bits in um, to keep it fresh. I think perhaps the biggest change in, in the show is the lyrics. Um, I think 98% of the show has brand new lyrics. I think 20 years ago when I was a kid writing, writing Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, I didn't really understand the importance of lyrics in musical theatre. I guess this is true of all young writers, but lyrics to me were just a series of vowel sounds that the singer made a pretty sound that the, that the singer made when they were singing songs. But, ly but lyrics are really important, especially to the storytelling, and I've really honed that craft and studied it hard. So what, what we've ended up with is a very exciting uh, 20th anniversary version of the show that I hope 
has given uh, some fresh blood to the show to keep it going for another 20 years. And anyone who knows the show, uh, who's been to see it before anywhere around the world or has a copy of the CD or whatever, I think they'll definitely recognise it. It's still the same show. But for anyone who's coming to it for the first time, they'll see a very, uh, very modern, uh, very exciting musical adventure. Uh, very in keeping with the shows that families go to see uh, in the West End and all over the world. It, it, it won't sound like a 20-year-old show, it'll sound like a show that was written yesterday. And actually some of it was. Get home. I'll be waiting. <laughs>